welcome back to part four of the Entity Cybersecurity Talks here at the Entity University in Berlin. We are now covering part four, which is about innovative SOC strategies, AI and incident response management. And again, I welcome three guests here with me. I have Johannes Drohak, who is the CEO of Sparehead Consulting, cybersecurity thought leader in social media, philosoph and photographer. <laughs> and then we have Azim Alem, who is a veteran in cybersecurity since young years, expert on forensics and SOC design. Thank you. And Stefan Hendricks from Dimension Data, who is a seasoned cybersecurity expert, innovative thinker, and always ready for disruptive statements. <laughs> That's true. So let's get, kick it off. You know, quite often we hear AI is currently omnipresent in cybersecurity. We see we have tools to detect threats before they happen. We, uh, we have, uh, and the vendors promise nearly everything around that, that tools. On the other hand, from my perspective, tools alone will be not the holy grail for cybersecurity to make us more secure in the future. So what is your perspective, Azim, uh, based on your experience? Will this AI hype help us to be more secure in the future, help us to build better SOCs? Um, you touch on an important point, saying hype. Um, security industry, unfortunately, is going through a hype. And sometime every year there is a hype around products, next generation products, AI, machine learning. To say they will not help is a wrong statement. They will definitely help. But I'll go back to the same statement. Security is a process. And process involves procedures, tools, and people. And we try to circumvent uh, the people and the procedures element from that. And when you talk about evolving SOC, or I call that as intelligence-driven security operation center, uh, you've got to look into the whole traditional thing. What we're trying to do is, the main point is, you're defining what we call as dwell time, the breach exposure time. The time it um, uh, the breach, uh, the uh, attacker comes into the network to the time you find out. That is what you're looking at in the SOC. And how you define that, AI can help into that, but it's the whole ecosystem uh, that is required to embed into that. Okay. So, Stefan, um, you see a lot of these activities as well. Can you agree with that statement? Or Yeah, I agree with the statement, especially the, on the high part. Um, on the other hand, a AI is real, and, uh, and, and I think we now are seeing massive disruption in, the, in that AI space, uh, whether it's in the SOC or in, on, in a bro broader context, uh, because of two reasons. Um, AI needs massive compute power, because it's, it's a lot of math that you have to uh, process at, at huge speeds, uh, one, and two, it needs massive amounts of data, right? And if you, if you have those preconditions, you can create neural networks and, and apply machine learning and do great things. And, and in this context, I think AI uh, is already helping us in finding more needles in the, in the proverbial haystack, uh, i.e. finding uh, the meta events and seeing what's going on in the uh, uh, billions of logs that we're processing every day. Um, it will also guide our analysts into um, showing uh, IOC detail, uh, indication of compromise in terms of what's going on, how things are correlated, and, and assist the humans in doing the analysis. That being said, AI will never make the humans redundant. We will always need analysts to do the, the thinking. So that's my position on AI in a SOC. I see you nodding, Johannes. Yeah, well, I, I, I nod for two reasons. One is the human factor will continue to be important. And AI, as just as any other tool, is that a tool. Mm. It will help us to act smarter, faster, which is important. But we also have to keep in mind that AI is also used at the other side. <coughs> yep. The bad guys are using AI. And then we get into something else. When we hide again behind the technology and put the responsibility at the technology, Right? Then we forget that the bad guys can use the same AI to create data which will influence our AI and will let our AI do make the wrong decisions. Yeah. And, and, and we continue <coughs> to be in that black box mode. And that's what we need to change. It's a tool. Mm. And, and we should focus on it as a tool that helps us but not replaces our responsibility. Yeah, agreed. So I think the, uh, the, the, the tooling is a, is a good point. So if you move a little bit away from the AI-specific uh, discussion, companies more and more depend on SOCs today. We have we all cover, covered already today at the university many times the skill shortage we see on the market, et cetera. So we need tools to help us. On the other hand, companies struggle to build efficient SOC strategies. Why do you think they struggle to build a SOC? Uh, 
Well, they, st they struggle still because it is seen as something um, you can purchase or something you can, you can uh, make a procedure about. Yeah. And it's not seen as something you have to make part of yourself in addition to the technology, in addition to the skilled people. It has to be part of your daily routine, your daily thinking, your daily decision making. Mm -hmm. And that continues to drive the struggle because it's still a one-time purchase and we're done. We put it in a budget, we put it in a cost center and we're finished. And that's not the way it works and you guys have much more experience with that than I do. Yeah, and you mentioned the point about one-time purchase. It, it, it leads to the aspect that companies buy or develop SOC and the SOC acts as a reactive posture towards the cyber threat. We want the SOC to be more proactive, to preempt, and that's where AI comes in, because applied intelligence and analytics is a big part of the SOC, and that only comes through, through the AI, through the machine learning, but embedded into the SOC through a proactive measures as well. You, you need to have the hunting capability to hunt through that. Um, and that's where the problem comes in as well, that we forget about that. Many of the attacks the SOCs are detecting right now, they're no signature threat attack. They are mostly zero-day attack. They are based on behavior classification of the criminals, the pattern detection. How do you define the pattern detection is you need to make your SOC more proactive. And the proactive is not just buying the tool, it's the whole process through that. How do you define the baseline towards that? No, I agree, I agree, Azim. And, uh, and I think if you look at the, the SOC uh, industry and the vendors specifically, they will typically tell clients that uh, this magic tool will solve all of the problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, that's what they do, right? And we all know that's not true. Um, you know, um, if, if I'm given a race car, I will not do the Nuremberg ring in seven minutes because I'm a very bad driver compared to the professionals. And it's, yeah. it's the same thing. The tool is just a tool, you know. Yeah. Um, so you need the people, the experience, you need uh, the processes and, uh, and the knowledge bases that, uh, that we have as a managed security service provider and that even the, large, the largest of our clients do not have this equivalent because they're, they're a bank, they're focused on banking and even if they have their internal SOC, they will never be um, as good as, as one of the world's largest uh, MSSPs, which is what we are. So, so I think it's a matter of, of long-standing experience, great databases and a bit of AI, granted, but uh, the key thing is the people and the, and the background. Do you not, uh, that's a question for all of you, do you think that the um, upper mid-market, which is the backbone of most of the countries from an industry perspective, can really cope with that? Because understanding the capabilities, the threat vectors, the threat landscape, having the right capabilities in a company, how should a company, a mid-sized company, cope with all that challenges, with the procedures, people, technology? Well, the, the first step to coping is realizing that you have a problem. And as soon as you are aware that you have a problem, that's where you can start looking for solutions. And we see um, a couple of service provider, providers who are now starting to focus on the smaller ones okay. and, and not the ones with the big budgets. They, they look at the, at the common market. So when you are aware that you have a problem, that's when you start looking for a solution. And I think that's the first step. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry, what I, what I was about to comment on, and I agree on what you're saying. Uh, what we're seeing in the in the mid-tier market and uh, and uh, the high, you know larger SMB market is is a dramatic shortage of qualified personnel. These these people cannot find the, the the cyber analysts that they need to to build their own SOC. So they have an even bigger problem than our large clients because our large clients can at least afford the expensive analysts and and the tools, right? Uh, whereas in in the mid-tier industry. It is, it is shocking. I mean, it's the, the network guy that also does the security and the database operations and, and you know, all that in nine to five, never mind if they get hacked on a Friday evening, right? It's gonna be a massive disaster. So I think there's a, a big market there, but of course there's a budget problem because cybersecurity is expensive, right? It, and there's no shortcuts. I mean, uh, you can automate, but only to a certain extent. So, mm -hmm. so it's, a, it's an interesting evolution, but I, I think that SMB and mid-tier space is also undergoing significant changes there. I have one question for you, Azim, in, in that context as well, um, because we, we talked about the SOC deployment, et cetera, and you mentioned correctly, <coughs> we should reduce the time to detect hmm. an attack at the end. To, and um, having said that, people still have to be prepared for the attack. Hmm. How do you see the, uh, the, the, the connection of the SOC team and the incident response plan maturity in the market at the moment? Because quite often we see companies, even if they detect an attack, they're acting a little bit like a headless chicken because they don't know what to do. How do you see that? Yeah, very good point. I mean, based on the experience uh, going through a lot of incident response uh, in the last couple of years, I think this is one of the most important points you've mentioned. 
And I think three elements I, I, I look into that is one I call is actionable intelligence. Uh, intelligence against is a very big buzzword. Uh, and we're kind of overwhelmed by intelligence right now. We have so many companies providing us intelligence. What I say is organizations are not aware of it. What is specific to their environment and how do you develop that intelligence which shows them what is a threat to them. And that can only be defined when incident response team and the SOC team works together. Um, then also I'm talking about the content filtering. Um, you buy the products, um, but how do you develop the intelligence into the product is around the business intelligence. What we call in IT security terms is use cases deployment. How do you define those business intelligence in your product that allows you to filter the white noise? So it allows you to filter the noises on the door uh, or the windows and look out for the specific adversaries. So coming back to your question, incident response team is a very integral part of the SOC environment. When you look into L3 triage around hunters, that's where the incident response team sits together. And you're right, many SOCs don't agree to that. And that's why the problem is you have a SOC, but you still can't uh, respond to an incident. So that's a, that's a very important point to close the discussion, but I want to ask each of you about the future of the SOC. If you have a vision of the SOC of the future, what do you think uh, should a company to, uh, do to make a step in that direction to the utopia of a SOC. Uh, Stefan, if you have one, one recommendation. So, so what, what I'm seeing uh, in the market is that we're increasingly seeing what I call hybrid SOCs, right? Yeah. Where, where it is a mixture of uh, an on-prem customized SOC that uh, the client has built and that is then linked up in terms of threat intel and advanced analytics to uh, a managed security service provider to have the best of both worlds. The, the, the flexibility and the knowledge of the client's infrastructure, which is done by the traditional SOC team on-prem, combined with the advanced Intel and AI-driven analytics uh, that, that's coming from the MSSP. So, so I think that's uh, uh, something that we'll see increasingly in the future, and, and I think this will be the future model for many SOCs to come. Yeah. Azim, what is your utopia? Um, I think um, I agree with you, so I'm not going to repeat the same, but I, I think the acceptance that you might get breached, and you will get breached, there's no 100% security. And uh, based on that, you need to define what we call as a hunting capability within your environment, whether it's a SOC, whether it's a NOC, but the hunting capability is very important. And for that, if you want to go for a hybrid option, yeah, because the digital transformation right now is outpacing the uh, environment of the company organization to meet those needs. So yeah, you can go for a hybrid or on-premise as well. But from my side, um, the acceptance that you will get breached and it's a matter of how you minimize the breach exposure time based on the development you're doing. Johannes, and what would you recommend? Acceptance at executive level, because none of this can happen when the decisions maker, makers are not accepting the risk yes. and are not budgeting the solutions. That's what we need as the first step. And then we bring in all kinds of solutions and, and we can either buy the best or hire the best. That's, that's the way it's going to be. But we need the decisions based on awareness. Thanks a lot for all the good input on the Security Operations Center. This was the end of the part four of the Entity Cybersecurity Talks. We still have a journey to go on the SOC maturity. Thanks a lot to my guests. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much for listening.